Welcome back to Thick Riff Thursday. I'm your host, Nickelback Broomthal, and today I've got a riff that's going to blow your socks off. <laughs> that's such a stupid intro. Today, I do have a cool riff, and I recorded a video of it on my phone yesterday because I didn't want to forget it, and I wanted to use it today for Thick Riff Thursday, but I forget how it goes, so I airdropped it to myself so I can roll the tape. I want to go higher on the last one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That is dope. That is dope. I love it. When I was coming up with that riff, I was trying to decide what tuning it would be cool in because, yeah, obviously it's cool and drop F sharp and it's like a... <laughs> It's like nice and, you know, bouncy, but I also kind of want to hear it in drop C. So what I think we'll do is record a version of it in drop F, drop F sharp, then record it in drop C, and we'll see how it sounds. But first, let's do drop F sharp. <laughs> That's the riff right there, baby. Let's try one ten. Two. Okay, one ten feels good. Let's try it like one fourteen just for gits and shiggles. I actually like it at 114 better. Okay, let's do it. Scratch take time, you guys know the drill. I, I keep doing... I don't wanna to go to the 12th fret on the second bar. I wanna do open and do that. I keep messing that up. There we go. Cool. The rest of the other scratch take was was fine. Let's lay some drums down. I think drums would be pretty straightforward to be honest. Just like a little bomb. Um just wanted to beatbox it for you. Just in case you wanted to hear me beatbox it before I actually go to the drum kit. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Uh, I just keep hitting that top trigger on the on the left crash when I'm doing that. So it keeps hitting the splash. Just want those to be up on the crash. Yeah, that's fucking groovy, dude. Hell yeah, brother. Get some good guitar takes. I think I'm trying to break this guitar today, subconsciously. Or <laughs> like, I was I was playing it before I started recording on the camera, and uh, I turn around and I smash it against my desk, and now there's a nick in the top of it, on the headstock. And this is a pretty new guitar, so I'm pretty bummed about that. And then after that, I set it on my I set it on my drum throne, where it was like here. I'll change my camera so I can show you how dumb this is. I said it like that. I said it, why would I do that? Why would I do that? And then, and then, so I had it, it was, it was more like that. And then I stepped over it so I could get back there and hit record on the camera. And then I, I kicked the neck and it pushed it down and it got like that close 
to falling off the chair before I caught it. I'm just being reckless. I'm being reckless this afternoon. Mixing, mastering, remote production, post-production, composition. If you're in need of any of those services, head on over to architecttigerstudios.com and let's get in touch. All right, back to the riffs. All right, I'm excited to see how this will sound in drop C. Maybe it'll just be dumb. Maybe it'll suck in drop C. Well, let's get some good takes of the F sharp version. Two, three. Oh, so close to getting it perfect on the first try. Okay, I think that was good. Good job, Nick. Look at you. Getting good takes. That was sick harmonized. That was an accident. I just played the first version. But since the riff, the way I wrote it, or the way I intended to write it at first was to just go up a third on the last repetition, but that was really sick harmonized. The harmony is sick. Oh no, guys, I'm liking this too much in drop F sharp already. I don't know. We'll see. I still want to hear it in drop C, but I'm like already sold in F sharp. Let's punch that in real quick. Not great, but good enough. The notes are there. All right. That was pretty good. These notes don't sound great because they're played on the wrong strings. So let's fix that. Force that string. What string is it? It's gonna be one, two, three, four, and then this string. And these are gonna be hammer on slash pull off. So that sounds so much better. Just putting those four string articulations in there, it made the bass sound a thousand times better. So I did it on the first bar. I haven't done it on the second bar yet. Listen to the difference. Listen to the difference. Bass programming 101, you gotta add articulations. You just have to add articulations. If not, it's gonna sound so insanely programmed, but like once you add the four string articulations, once you add those hammer-ons and pull-offs and whatever else is in the riff, God, it just pulls it together. Night and day, man. Night and day. This also needs a slide, actually. It could be a little bit slower. Hell yeah, that riff is nasty. Okay, let's hear it in drop C. We're gonna copy everything, select all for the bass, and then we're gonna move this F sharp. We take everything and move it up to C. Okay, just hearing it with the bass, I like it. I have a feeling it's gonna sound very Born of Osiris. Okay, let's do this. God, this guitar sounds so good. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's hear how it sounds. That's pretty sick, actually. <laughs> I kind of love it in drop C. Okay, let's let's record it. I think that was a decent take. Oh, I really like drop C, but I also really like drop F sharp. Okay, let's hear it in drop F sharp. Then we'll hear it again in drop C. It 
is really gross and drop F sharp. All right, let's hear drop C. Dude, they're both sick. They're both sick. Okay. F sharp sounds a little more like modern metal Corey and drop C sounds a little progier. That's what I'm noticing. Everything else is the same. It's literally just the tuning, literally just the tuning, like the mix, the tones and everything. They're exactly the same. It's just the tuning, but they feel super different and they're both awesome. I don't know, guys, every time I hear it in F sharp, like my initial reaction is a stank face. And maybe that's a sign. Maybe that is just a telltale sign that this is a drop F sharp riff, but the harmonies work so well in drop C. Let me know what you guys think. But yeah, I, I think I like drop F sharp more, but I, I like drop C a lot more than I thought I would. That's for sure. Okay. Let's do some production layers now. That's nice. Hell yeah, brother. Now let's, oh, do I already have a high pass on this? I don't, I just have a blank EQ plugin. That's cool. That's helpful. What other like production layers could I do with this? Let's consult Spotify. What has like a bunch of cool production layers in it? Let's go to this album. This album goes crazy. Yeah, maybe something synthy. Ooh, we could distort the shit out of that. Let's roll with this synth, doing the same thing as those production guitars, and then we'll dial the synth in a little more. That is wild. I think that's an interesting sound. How about some decapitator on it? E sounds good. We're gonna need to soothe that out for sure. And then we can add some reverb and delay on it too. I think I want some delay before the reverb. That's cool. You guys know I like to do tremolo. That's cool. Let's try another synth with a different purpose. And we're gonna copy the riff by taking the bass MIDI. Gonna get rid of all the, oh, we need to, we need to get rid of all of our plugins here. Let's bypass them, cause maybe I'll use some more of those. Let's try maybe a bass. Maybe that adds like an actual low end layer. I wasn't thinking to had to add the bass as like a low end thing. I was thinking more like we would beef up the guitars with it, but see what we can do with just the lower things and not the run. With the riff, maybe not, but it could be a cool way to introduce the riff. Let's go ahead and search through like what we were doing to try to find something to layer the guitars with. That's kind of cool. Very video gamey with decapitator on it. That changes the sound completely. Kind of only really hearing the high end of it though. Wonder if we can make it more mid focus with the EQ. God, again, that would make a sick intro. Let me hear all these layers together, these synth guys. That's pretty dope. <laughs> Damn, okay, hold on. Let's create a track stack here. So 
Call it synths. Lord, forgive me for my synths. What about up an octave on this one? That's kind of like goofy sounding, right? This bass here. I liked it before, dial in decapitator like less aggressively. Yeah, it is panning a little bit. Let's let's add a gain plugin to make this mono. Definitely don't want that to be stereo. All right, let's do it. I'm running up the clock here, but you know, it sounds sick. Let's add some sort of like electronic kick, something thuddy. That one's nice and subby. I like that. Maybe like a trashy sounding industrial distorted snare. That's nice for attack. That's a that's a loop, but I like that kick drum a lot. Steal that kick out of this loop. Let's let's stop the electronic drums there so we can do a drum fill with the real drums into the riff. We still need like a long decay snare. That might work. I immediately already know that I'm gonna wanna drop a soothe on there, maybe a decapitator, and then a reverb for sure. A little filter sweep action. Yeah, 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 yeah. These electronic drums are a little loud. Let's go effects drums, is what we'll call it. We should also compress it a little bit. How would this snare sound pitched down? This one is harsh as f Oh my God. Why is it filling up the entire frequency spe spectrum? That's wild. Okay. Now let's look for a hi-hat loop. That's kind of nice. Just like a little noise layer with some faint hats underneath. Yeah. That's sick. I like that a lot. Let's throw the mastering chain on and give it a listen. That's gross, dude. That's gross. I really like this intro too, cause it's it's cooler than just going to like the default. I'm gonna play the riff on like a lo-fi track. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Thick Riff Thursday. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace.